Today we are going to be doing a new sound analysis video on Link's Awakening. Um, yeah, we're kind of just going to play through some of the game. We're not going to be able to see the whole thing. I have some notes in front of me where we're going to be able to talk about some really cool things that they did in the game to really make it flesh out and to really explore the space of the sound of the game. And I feel like this game has a very interesting aesthetic choice, and the sounds that they used in tandem with the art style is kind of interesting to talk about. So we're just going to jump in right now. Also, just comparing this to the original, I mean, this it's just such a huge upgrade in style. Um, if you remember, though, the original version of the game, it was a lot, it's not too far off, actually. Link still had the little dot eyes. I feel like this is just the right direction for a remake from Game Boy onto the Switch. You. I really like when um, you talk to somebody in this game and they just give one little voice line and nothing else. Nah. Because voice acting in a game like this would just kill it. Like, <laughs> it doesn't fit the minimalistic style of the game. And the art and the sound in that sense kind of tie together really nicely. And if they were to do something like Undertale or Banjo-Kazooie where they have a voice clip play for every single letter or every single syllable, I feel like it wouldn't work very well either. Um, I feel like minimalism is a big key here for Link's Awakening sound. <laughs> and you can also tell a lot about the personality of the characters when you're talking to them. I mean, Marin here laughs. I forget what the other guy's name is, but but he, <laughs> he sounds like Mario, actually. He has like a little bit of like an Italian like, oh, yeah. So yeah, we got the shield. Oh, having different footsteps on different surfaces is so nice in a game. Just hearing it from grass. Onto the dirt. It goes such a long way. There's so much atmosphere in this game, too. Nice 3D positional sounds. One thing that I love is how Link sounds. Let's listen to him. I'm going to talk about it in a second, because we're about to pick up a new item. Those wing flapping sounds are beautiful. They probably use like an umbrella or something for it. Just like flapping an umbrella open and closed. I kind of wish they didn't have the voice of the owl be the same every single time. I guess there is sort of some realism to it, because if you hear an owl, it's usually the same pitch, if you've ever heard an owl, but it kind of just feels repetitive to me. A little bit more variety would be nice. And that was beautiful. I love that they were able to use the chiptune style with an orchestra. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's hard to do as well. I think that people don't give a lot of credit to games or soundtracks that are able to mix orchestral with anything. Orchestral rock, orchestral chip tune, any of that is just so tough to do. And we got our sword. And I was gonna say earlier, like just hearing Link there, I love how he sounds like a kid. His voice is very uh, childlike almost. You can tell that he's young. And that kind of matches the art style of the game quite a bit. Everything kind of feels like a claymation in this game. Consistent feedback sounds, really important. The intense metal of the shield really going a long way to emphasize that you're just hitting something. It would have been interesting if they had layered the sound of the source that's hitting you along with the metal. So like if that's made of wood, let's say, then maybe it adds a wood layer to that. Well, if I hit this guy, then maybe it's like a little bit squishier. The ambiences are really, really nice in this game. 
really nice music transitions. It's actually surprising how loud they are. I would have expected them to be a little bit quieter. The entire mix for this game is actually very ranged in the mid to high frequencies. And I feel like that's a really interesting choice, considering the art style of the game. While Link is here probably regular human-sized, there is still part of me that does just feel like he's tiny because this does have this claymation style. It just makes me feel like I'm controlling a toy right now. So having high-pitched sounds makes a lot of sense. Because if everything was colossal and giant, I would expect a lot more low-pitched sounds for sure. Or at least more sounds in the lower register. But here, it just makes sense to have high-pitched sounds overall. Oh, I seriously love the ambiences. Here's our owl friend again. One thing I really like about this game, too, and I think that a lot of games miss the opportunity for, is when you hit an enemy, I really want to hear their voices. Being able to hear their voice goes such a long way to get an idea for their personality. Oh, what happened? Welp. Cool. That's fine. Um... <laughs> So, when it comes to the voice, like, I can tell a lot by this guy's art style that he's big, he's kind of brooding, he's... <laughs> seems kind of dumb, too, uh, just by, like, him looking around like that. But you get so much more out of it if you're able to hear their voice. You get to hear it in a matter of microseconds. Really nice music transitions going from one area to the next. Yeah, even like even just here getting to hear their little voices and such is really nice. Oh, I was wondering what those sounds were. This is one of those instances in a game where you want the sound to give proper feedback as to what you should be doing there, but at the same time I totally get the idea that having the sound can't really convey everything, and it's just a trial and error uh, learning experience, I guess, that you have to go through. <laughs> I do wish that there was a little bit more of a, a jabbing sound from those guys. My mindset when it comes to sounds for games is everything with an animation needs a sound. That's one thing that we really try to emphasize in the monthly competition for blip sounds. It seriously goes such a long way just to like add any sound. And I think that it's not too hard to create what people consider to be a good or bad sound. I think that people objectively know whether somebody wants to hear a sound effect again. And it's not too hard for people to really understand what a good sound is versus a bad sound. And in that sense, I really do feel that it's best to just stay on the minimal side. This is something else in the game. They have this like piece of power that you can use. I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it's fine as a, like a mechanic in a game. I don't really have any say on that. But I really just wish that it like changed the background music instead of this three second loop to play with. It's kind of annoying. And I do actually kind of wish as well that in addition to this, it made the sword more powerful. I am now killing enemies with one hit, but it would be really, really cool if I could uh, hear like a more powerful sound, like expose some of that low end that I was talking about. Cause that low end isn't present at all, but if it were to show up all of a sudden from getting that power up, man, would I feel powerful. The rule of thumb for me is that things with low end or lower pitches usually sound more powerful and bigger while something that's higher pitched is smaller and weaker so even just changing the sound of link's sword attack goes such a long way in adding just a tiny bit of the lower frequencies will make it sound way more powerful and you can use that to sort of influence the emotion of the player just by changing something like the footstep sounds or the sword sounds um, a really good example of this is actually in Ocarina of Time when 
Link is wearing the iron boots versus just his regular footsteps. He's a lot heavier, and as a result, he will sink underwater if he has the iron boots on. Correlating with that is also having lower-pitched metal sounds. <laughs> yeah, again, you just get to hear how crazy she is. Thank you, old lady. Yeah, like, even on that guy right there, it would have been nice to hear a little, like, uh, wobbly sound when he goes into that kind of dazed state, just like a little, like, wow, wow. It's gonna be pretty easily made with a synthesizer, and I think it would actually fit the aesthetic of this game quite a bit. Even like the music here kind of fits into the child's toy box aesthetic that we were talking about. One thing that we always practice and preach in the game audio training series for blip sounds is just the idea of thematic sound design, where if we can get as much information about a game through the art style, through the story, so many different areas of the game can dictate how we approach our sound design and a lot of the decisions in our sounds. And for that reason, we have a bunch of toys running around, like these characters are all look like they're made of clay. And as a result of that, we have this. We have a music box that's playing, and we have a lot of high-pitched sounds that give the impression that we're in this tiny little world. It's very satisfying. Even the reward sounds are super minimal, and they're quiet. That is one thing that they actually do really well, is they actually scale the rewarding jingles. Ones that are way more important are made to be more fulfilling when you collect something. Um, and that even scales to the point of a point where you're like trying to collect multiple items, and the more items you collect, it actually makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, and that can be done just by simply adding more instruments, or filling out the frequency spectrum a little bit more. It goes a long way to make it feel a little bit more... exciting. <laughs> oh, I love her voice. The way that they do the panning attenuation for this is very good as well. Very pretty too. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you're looking to learn more about video game audio on the technical side and on the theory side, which this video showcases, go to the Game Audio Training Series where you can get 10 plus hours of video course material, a weekly call with a mentor like myself, and real games to work on. We really focus on hands-on experience, but also being able to theory craft about your sound design and your decision making. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the Game Audio Training Series.